Captain? Oh, hi, sweetie. Oh, you brought me some company. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Captain John Hans, and, and I, I, welcome to my residence. I was the first of the folks here in this residence. In fact, I was the first settler here at the Grand Canyon. I, I put in the first stagecoach and built the first cabin. You know, the, the Indian people were here ahead of me, those Hopi folks. Uh, uh, I got along with them pretty well. They, they only killed me two or three times. And, uh, you know, I, I had a reputation as the greatest liar in Arizona, but that's mostly just because I like to tell stories. And, you know, I tell them different every time I tell them. Mostly I think that's because I f forget how I told them the last time. But uh, I really enjoy telling stories around here and, and teaching people about the Grand Canyon, talking to people about the Grand Canyon. And, uh, you know, every once in a while somebody says to me, Captain, how, much, how come you know so much about the Grand Canyon? I tell them, well, you know, I, I was the first settler. I, I was the first person who built a cabin. I, this is my home. It's been my home for a very long time. And they say, no, you seem like you know everything. I tell them, well, that, that's true, I do. Mostly because I dug it. You see, I, it was a hard life here when I first arrived. You know, there wasn't a lot of food. And it, it's hard to grow crops around here. I, I put in a little garden. I, I love having a little garden. I love to see things growing in the ground. And, and I was sitting there admiring my garden one day, and I, and I looked out there, and there's one of them darn little rock squirrels. Have you seen them things? They are destructive. They will come up and chew on everything. Oh, they, I just hate them things. And, and one of them darn little rock squirrels come up, and, and my favorite crop, the favorite thing I like to grow was my sweet corn. I love sweet corn. And one day one of them darn little rock squirrels come up and climbed right up the stalk and, and pinched off the ear of my sweet corn. He stole it, he did, and he took off with it. And I thought, I'm gonna shotgun that fella. And I grabbed my shotgun and, and, and he went down the hole. Well, I couldn't do nothing about that. And I watched him careful like, and the next day, sure enough, that dang thing coming and, and stole another ear of my corn. And I thought, that will not do. So I went and I, I got my shovel, I did, and I watched him careful like. I figured out where his hole was, and I watched him, and I went over and I looked down that hole, and, 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 and sure enough, I could see him looking up at me thinking he was safe in his whole little face going mm, like this, and I thought, I'll fix you, so I went to digging. And he saw me coming, so he went to digging. And then I went to digging faster, and he went to digging faster. And the next thing you know, I was digging and flinging, and dirt was flying all over the place, and I dug and I dug and I dug, and I, and I looked up, and I had dug the whole Grand Canyon. And I thought, well, this place is beautiful. I think I'll keep it. Well, now, I, I suspect you know that I didn't dig the whole Grand Canyon. I mean, I, I did dig my share of it, came here looking for silver or gold, never found any of that stuff. I did find asbestos, but I'd done my share of digging. These, these old hands have worked, you know. But I wasn't the only one digging. And William Wallace Bass, he, he, he had, uh, did a little digging too, and oh, I suspect even Ralph Cameron turned a cloud or two on a good day. But you know, that wasn't the important thing. What was really important was the way this canyon kind of dug into us, dug into our heart. You know, we came here and we saw this place and, and we realized this place was special. And we realized that this place was something people ought to see. So every one of us, we started bringing people up. I put in the stagecoach and started bringing up people on the stage and telling them stories. You know, they wanted to hear what I had to say. And, and William Wallace Bash, you know, he put in a buckboard. I always used to say there's two liars at the Grand Canyon, and William Wallace Bass is both of them. But uh, he did the same thing because we thought, you know, this is a place that, that needs to be set aside. This is a place that needs to be protected. And you know, everyone here, everyone around you right now felt the same way about it. We all came here and, uh, and took care of this place and, and started showing it to people and telling stories and, and passing it on to your kids and other people's kids and, well, your grandkids. And, and that was important. You know, that's what 
everyone here around you has done is, is come here and dedicate their lives to this place and dedicate ourselves to making sure that it was here for you to come and, and enjoy. Truth of it is though, folks, uh, our work is over. The folks here surrounding me right now, we done our job. We left you something. We gave it to you the best way we knew how. But our work is over. It's your job now. You're the ones got to take care of this place. You're the ones got to pick up where we left off. And you're going to have to do it because, let's face it, there's, there's folks who will tear a place up because they think they can make a dollar off of it. There's folks who will run you out of it and keep it for themselves because they think they're better than you because they got more money. And they'll do everything they can to make sure they take this away from you. And, and we've done our best to give it to you, but now it's your job. Don't let them take it away from you. Don't let them do that kind of stuff. Stand up. Speak up once in a while. When you see something, you take care of this place. Pass it on to your own kids. Do what Theodore Roosevelt said. Save it for your children and your grandchildren as the sight everyone should see. And that's, that's the way I feel about it. So... So tell your stories and, 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 and pass this legacy on a little bit. You know, we all tell our stories. Um, Emery Kolb told his stories with pictures and, and Glenn over there, why he told his stories and he actually knew what he was talking about. And that's important. Stand up for this place now, folks. It's yours now. Our job is over. Get out there and explore. Get out there and enjoy. Show it to people. Let them know how much you love it and how much it means to you. Be careful when you're out there, though. It's, uh, them, them, them darn rock squirrels are still out there. They hate me, you know, cause, because I went to digging at them. So watch out for them darn rock squirrels. They will bite you. So stay away from them. But take care of this place, folks, and pass it on. And let those of us who's here now rest. Good night, sweetie.